Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Sephrata with, and it's time for another edition of Meme or Dream, the series where we take deck lists that Wizards publishes over on Magic.gg, saying we got at least six wins in a row at Platinum Rank or Better in Best of Three on Magic Arena, and we put them to the test and try to find out are these janky decks actually better than they look in a dream, or are they just as janky as they seem on paper in a meme so this week honestly our deck isn't that janky we have played some really bad decks on meme or dream today's deck actually looks functional it's two colors it's got a bunch of four ofs it's got a dedicated theme against all odds it actually has a full sideboard that looks kind of realistic so the question is if the deck's not like super duper janky why are we playing it and the answer is it's built around a theme that i am very interested in and i have not seen literally anyone playing which is nahiri and Aster for Mirrodin equipment. Now here is a card I've been really intrigued by ever since it was released in Aftermath. I've messed around with it a little bit, haven't got it to work, but this looks, looks pretty interesting. So the plan of our deck today is pretty simple. We have two big payoffs in Aster and Nahiri, both of which care about equipment, both of which generate card advantage. Aster lets us equip things on the cheap, draws a equipment when it ETBs. Nahiri, when we attack with equipped creatures, exiles cards, lets them play it. If it's equipment, we play it for free. So the goal of our deck is in the early game to play a bunch of equipment that are actually sneaky creatures, uh, like Rabbit Battery reconfigure. So it's an equipment that can also be a creature or a creature that is also an equipment, I guess. But then the big payoffs are all of these for Mirrodin style equipment, Citizen's Crowbar, an equipment that makes a 1-1 attached to it when it comes into play, Bar Battle Fix, Hex Gold Harbid, Blade Hold War Whip. So the goal is in the early game, when we're playing our cheap creatures, they're actually equipment. So they're supporting Aster and they're supporting Nahiri. And then we play our big payoffs and hopefully they parlay these equipment into victory. The other really interesting card in this deck is Nahiri's Resolve. So we played Nahiri's resolve a little while ago in a straight up like Elish Norn Panharmonicon Blink deck and it was really sweet. This deck is using Nahiri's Resolve very very differently. Remember Nahiri's Resolve can blink any number of non-token creatures or artifacts. So in this deck the idea is in the early game we play all these equipment that make creatures and those creatures are probably gonna die at some point and after they die we're gonna have a bunch of equipment on the battlefield and we can use the Hiri's Resolve to blink all of our four mirrored and stuff and it's gonna come back into play and it's gonna make the tokens again which kind of gives us this permanent creature base that keeps coming back and keeps coming back and keeps coming back. So that's the idea of the deck. All the four mirrored and equipment, a couple of big payoffs, the Hiri's Resolve to reset things, Removal wise, Rebel Salvo, kind of like absurd in this deck. It's usually going to be one mana thanks to affinity for equipment to deal five damage to a creature or planeswalker. And then Sunfall, I guess we can exile everything and we don't really care because we can reset all of our equipment anyway with Nahiri's Resolve. So that's the idea of the deck. As far as the sideboard, it actually looks kind of reasonable. Uh, a bunch of Planeswalkers, which I guess is for control. We just like take out some of the less resilient stuff, take out the sweepers, bring in a bunch of Planeswalkers. For aggro, Lithomantic Barrage, Elspis by uh, Angel Fire Ignition to gain some life. Boom, Bringer Valkyrie can just absolutely wreck aggro as a Bane Slayer Angel. And then Unlicensors for Graveyard. So that is our deck. Nahiri Aster, four mirrored in equipment. That's our meme or dream for today. So let's jump into some games and see. Is Nahiri a meme or a dream? What about Aster and the four mirrored stuff? Let's find out. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll be back in a bit for the wrap up. Need some magic cards? Well, you can snag them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash MTG Goldfish. All right. Meme or dream time. <laughs> we are doing some Nahiri equipment shenanigans. And, ooh, wow. I mean, this is sort of the sort of the dream. Unfortunately, a tap land for no apparent reason. But I mean, we got a bunch of an equip uh, equipment to reduce the cost on Nahiri, and then we can Nahiri. Um, yeah, let's just play the tap land. I don't think this deck actually wants wins card, Greg. <laughs> that seems a little bad. Ooh, opponent's gonna rip some souls. Well, play the land, and yeah, let's play Citizens Crowbar. That can potentially let us blow up this Soul Ripper, which might be necessary. Pono seems to be some sort of Vracto Sack deck. Blood Tithe Havista. Crewing. Are we sacking? No. All right, down to 16. 
How much does this cost to activate one? So we want to add equipment to the battlefield for Nahiri. We also might need to blow this up. Uh, let's play 2-2 two, two or 3-1. Let's play a 2-2. Two, two. The 2-2 two, two can block the Berserker. All right, pass the turn. This is interesting. If our opponent goes to kill this, then we might have to blow up the Soul Ripper. I guess we could just wait. I don't know if we want to sack the crowbar. That's the problem. All right, they're gonna kill the they're gonna kill the two two. It actually might be better to just rebel salvo the soul ripper. Yeah, I think we do that because we want to keep the equipment on the battlefield. So let's rebel salvo. All right, opponent sacks it, draws some cards. But I mean, this should set us up for a big Nahiri turn. So we get to play the land, play rabbit battery. Actually, do we even play Nahiri yet? Maybe we wait one more turn. I think we do. I think we just run out all of our equipment, hit our opponent. This is gonna set up for an even better Nahiri turn next turn. All right, Fusling. Because we can play Nahiri, yeah, we'll just take it. Play Nahiri, equip the rat. Oh, this is gonna be absurd, hopefully. Stop killing our stuff. All right, gonna sack to draw. Oh, there's a resolve too, golly. All right, well, uh, Nahiri time. Play Nahiri. And opponent scoops it up. Nahiri OP, Nahiri OP. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. We didn't get to do the cool things. I guess our opponent was a little, a little mana screwed. So opponent's playing a sack deck. I mean, they're probably aggro enough that Valkyrie seems good. Sunfall actually seems fine. We probably like Trim and Nahiri's Resolve. Oh, that was gonna be a good Nahiri. Would've got to draw so many cards. I don't think we need to go full on Planeswalker mode. Maybe more cheap removal? Like Elspeth Smite, but what are we cutting is the question. Let's go down to Sunfall. The problem is we can't cut too many equipment or else our payoffs don't work. Let's go up a Smite and down a rabbit battery. That's just right like that. I think the Valkyrie's good enough. Like they could still possibly kill it. They are a black deck, so they probably have go for the throat, but that game went really well. Would have been nice to see the Nahiri triggers, but that's kind of the dream. Yeah, all right, we'll try this. Our good friend, Windsguard Craig. Always got the Windsguard Craig. Well, it, it might be a little slow. We'll see how fast of a start our opponents off do. There's a Soul Ripper gets and hits us. All right, well, that's good. At least we get a, a body on the battlefield. Now I feel a lot better about this hand because we also have the resolve to reset it eventually. Passing. Oh, there's a Valkyrie too. Uh, let's play the battlefield Fiorge and Blade Hold War Whip. For Mirrodin. Uh, pass turn. Opponent's gotta have removal, right? All right, there's a go for the throat. That's fine though. Like we would rather have them go for the throat our For Mirrodin stuff than go for the throat like our Aster or whatever. So play a mountain, play Aster, do some digging. Double go for the throat. All right, all right, all right. Well, we still get to go digging. Yeah, let's take a war whip. That works better with the uh, Nahiri's resolve. Pass the turn. Well, with two go for the throats down, this Boonbringer Valkyrie might actually stick. Voldaren, the real Sika. Sure. Cruise, okay. And sacks to kill it and gets in. Well, play the land, play the war whip. Play the, boy, a Nahiri would be sweet. We have all the equipment. Bear battle fist. Valkyrie gets better if we have a creature to back up. Opponent, more thrill seeking. And snipes. So we take seven and then they sack it and we take 14. So we drop to nine. Are we sacking? They almost have to, right? All right, they hit us temporarily to two. The bad news for our opponent is we have a Boonbringer Valkyrie that can back this up. And then we can equip and equip. Hit you for 10, gain 10? <laughs> Okay, opponent's deck was spicy, but uh, apparently no match for the power of Fermirden. Double snipe flying first strike lifelink. Yeah, so we're just gonna go back to 12 and hit our opponent to 10. And I mean, we got the, the Boonbringer. Sideburn playing a chief. And then we can set the uh, set up the Nahiri's resolve to uh, blink everything. I mean, our opponent was playing kind of a cool brew. I do think 
Speaking of our opponent's deck, Voldaren Thrillseeker is super underrated. Keep an eye on Voldaren Thrillseeker. I think that card's like super legit. More legit than most people realize at this point. Maybe it's not time yet. Maybe it's maybe it's after rotation and well, I guess forever from now. Maybe it's after Eldraine comes out, but there will be a time when Thrillseeker is like a legit top card in standard, I think. I think that card's actually very powerful. Uh, we will play first. Well, all right. Let's see if the Nahiri's Resolve equipment plan works. About it. Simic, eh? Oh, there's an Aster. Aster's good. Um, well, let's run out the Citizen's Crowbar. <laughs> Gonna beat down an enchantment opponent. Oh, they're doing these things. Venerated Rot Priest. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, Blade Hold War Whip. Well, I mean, I guess we go attacking. When this deck has the early Rot Priest and goes off, it is it is a tough deck to actually beat. Tamiyo Safekeeping. Gets a Poison Counter. Sends it to the air. Sends it to the air. Alright, up to six poison. No removal, unfortunately. Well, play the land, play Aster. But we probably just get janked out by Rot Priest. Aww. Opponents playing their own memer dream. The mulligan and this is like the zombie. It's like the zombie hunt of standard, basically, I think. I don't think it will ever be consistent enough to actually be good, but when it works, it is pretty uh, pretty fast and devastating, and we are seeing it work at the moment. Alright, hit our opponent for a bit, but I'm imagining we die here. That seems most likely. Opponent untaps. Whoa. Alright, if our opponent doesn't have anything, then maybe we don't die here. Play the land, so can Zan. Now let's play another war web. Play a bar battle fist. Opponent blocks. Tyvar stand. Alright. Well, up to seven poison. Can they get through three more? Can they target Rot Priest three more times, essentially? That flying thing would be the worst, but they already used two of those. How many of these can you possibly play? Land passes. Well, go to combat attack, I guess. A Tuara. And goes to one. Well, all right. Uh, Battle Fist. Harbor Melly, we've run a lot of equipment. Can we equip this? How much does this cost? Oh, too much. Uh, all right, well, pass the turn. This is it. Kill us or be killed. Can you combo? And they cannot. Wow. Pona had the turn one Rot Priest and it was not enough. We don't really have a sideboard for this. Barrage doesn't kill Rot Priest. I guess Elspeth Smite does if it attacks, but I don't even think they attack with it. Sunfall does get rid of it, right? I mean, we actually honestly just run it back, I think. It worked that game somehow. Somehow, some way we survived. Is turn one Rot Priest the scariest? That's gotta be the scariest turn one play in standard, right? Not the best, but the scariest just because it's like so easy so easy for things to go horribly wrong. No Rot Priest? Okay, no Rot Priest. Well, land and rabbit battery. We do need to draw another land, I think. Or two, or three for the Sunfall. Opponent, land, and Ivy. Well, we gotta kill that. When we draw the land, too. Well, Rebel Salvo, get rid of the Ivy. The problem with the Rot Priest deck is if you don't have the Rot Priest, it's much less scary. Opponent, boo, saves you. Well, I'm glad that's not blowing up our artifacts. Invasion of Ikoria. Gotta be a Rot Priest, right? Does this mean we, yeah, this is a bummer, but kill the Rot Priest. We just gotta, we gotta do it. Gotta, gotta do it. Keep killing Rot Priest, play the land, go attacking. Opponent. Another invasion of Ikoria. Coria, but forgot to pay mana. Probably not gonna be, this might be shame scoop territory. All right, opponent's gonna stick it out. Well, play the land, get in for one. Play an Aster. I assume they meant to get another Rot Priest there. Uh, we got so many war whips. Yeah, let's take a whole bird. What is a whole bird? 
All right, opponent does draw another Rot Priest. Uh, so many whips. Well, play the War Whip. I feel like we need to leave. We need to leave a creature back, right? We don't want to take free poison here. Yeah, let's just get in with the double striker. Yeah, there's a tie for a stand. I mean, the good news is, opponent's only got two cards in hand, and opponent's only got two cards in hand, and we're only at two poison. Oh, all right, that's an Ivy. That is one of our opponent's best cards. Oh, we draw land though. Oh, okay. Go to combat, get in with Aster. X2. Well, we get poisoned. And poisoned. Block. I think we gotta do it, unfortunately. Sunfall. Less card is slip out the back. Oh, and that's game. And that is game. And that is. I mean, that's what happened when the Rot Priest deck uh, draws the right cards. Goes attacking, goes attacking. We draw Winds card, Craig, and we will scoop it up. That was the only card in our opponent's deck that uh that was relevant not we didn't we hadn't even seen a slip out the bag but that is literally the only card that that would have mattered oh wow what are the what are the chances all right well might have been a tiny bit of high rolling with our opponent drawing a, that rot priest and the second ivy it's uh, a lot of their very few payoffs to have in the top uh, top couple of cards of their deck all right, the sand is decidedly okay. Uh, apparently has no rot priest. Well, play the land, run out the battle fist. Here comes the dorks for Mirrodin. Opponent. And a venerated rot priest. Play the land, play the crowbar. Go attacking. Island for our opponent and draws even more Rot Priest. Well, I mean, that's what makes the Rot Priest deck scary. When you run well, it is very devastating. And our opponent is, is running well at the moment, that's for sure. How do we do this? Play the land. Yes, I know, opponent. You high rolled. I, I hear you. I hear you, opponent. I hear you. The high rolling is is complete. Takes the beats to 12. Well, we'll play another equipment. Pass the turn. And draws an Ivy. Well, play Murex. Well, okay. I don't think this wins us the game because our opponent drew two Rot Priests, but gets a million poison counters, loses a Rot Priest. Makes Ivy indestructible. Well, play Asters, but it seems likely that we're dead here, unfortunately. The whole bird. All right, here we go, opponent. What can you do? What can you do? Opponent. Tiver stand. X2. Two poison counters. Yup. Tiver stand. Two more poison counters. And slip out the back. Fair enough. Well, I mean, that goes down as a loss on the record, but sometimes you just tip your hat and say, all right, yeah, you ran well. That is uh, definitely an obnoxious deck to play against. Thankfully, it's not good enough that you have to play against it very often. Maybe in best of one, you do more. So thankfully, it's it's not a good deck. If that was a good deck, oh, standard would be so miserable. So thankfully, it's a, thankfully it's a pretty bad deck, but... Wow, is that one of the most annoying decks to play against? The problem is like, ah, oh, the part that drives me crazy about it is it's just a math problem where there's only four Rot Priests in the deck. So you know that mathematically, like if you pull up the calculator, we actually can. 
<laughs> we can pull up the calculator. Like if you pull up the calculator, you know what the you know what the math is. They have sixty cards. There's only four Rotpries, and that's the only card in the deck that matters. You draw a seven card opening hand. What are your odds of having one? Thirty nine percent. In that game, our opponent had two. What are the odds of that? Six percent. I guess maybe it was in the first like nine cards or whatever. But that's like uh, you know you just get sometimes you get hit by the. The one out of every 10 games I get this draw type thing, which is kind of what we saw in that last one, so. But yeah, that's the part that drives me crazy about it, is you just know, like, oh, mathematically, mathematically this deck doesn't actually work, so why am I the one? <laughs> why am I the one that gets the 10 percenter? Like, why, why not, why not someone else? Why can't someone else deal with the... <laughs> The 10% high roll draw. So, I mean, that didn't make me feel worse about our deck or anything. Just sometimes you run into someone who's playing, like, the jank, and, and they get the jank. Founding of the third path. Okay. Opponent. Shieldred's Edict to get rid of a dork. Well, Sundown Pass. Hullabrid. I think the question of this one's going to be, can we resolve... Can we resolve, um... This Nahiri's resolve. Opponent mills a bunch of lands in an Asters. Opponent shipwreck marsh. Path of Pyrrhal. Well, play the land. Play Nahiri. Pass the turn. Opponent. Man, this founding a third path did some absurd work for our opponent, didn't it? Yeah, I guess maybe we shouldn't have played Nahiri because of that. Hmm. Uh, opponent, Mirix and passes. Well, Citizen's Crowbar. And Rabbit Battery. And opponent has a counter. Okay. I mean, the question is, can we resolve Nahiri's Resolve? I mean, I guess also do we draw land? But Nahiri's Resolve to blink our equipment does beat this control deck. Uh, opponent takes the beats. Crowbar number two. The sad augury with no proliferate. And another sad augury with no proliferate. Well, let's see how we do against the control deck. Pass the turn. We got a bunch of tutus. And passes. Well, I mean, playing a Hiri. That's a pretty good price. Memory. Our opponent's gonna go dig in for an answer. Do they find an answer? We would really like these triggers because... At a minimum, we'd like to get a land. Attack. Nahiri. Okay. Finally doing Winota things. We hit a land and a land. Okay. Well, I mean, that's better than nothing, I guess. Play the land. Equip. And let's see what removal they got. Opponents down to 13. Farewell is like the nightmare. Because that gets rid of... All right. Path of Peril. Oh, but now we get to do Nahiri's Resolve stuff. Okay, Nahiri's Resolve. That's what we wanted. That's what we wanted. Can you beat it? Oh, the plan is coming to fruition. Blink them all. They're coming back. They're coming back. Oh my goodness, it's gonna work. The Nahiri's Resolve plan's gonna work. So now we get all the tutus, and then we get to do this every time because the tokens stick around. So we just get four tutus each turn or something? Opponent, Memory Deluge, uh-huh. And all of our stuff comes back in with haste as well. I think we win. I think we win! Because we can haste in Aster too, Opponent, tap land. Here comes our friends. Yes, we would like to form Eared in a bit. And then I think we just play Aster. That'll also be a hasted boy. Uh, grab a War Whip and how do you like us now, Control? How do you like us now? Try to sweep our board, will ya? <laughs> Got um. So opponent had the removal to deal with uh to deal with our Nahiris, unfortunately. Although one of them was kind of our fault that we we kind of played into it a bit. So opponent had the removal to deal with our Nahiris. But in the end, in the end, Nahiri's resolve saves the day. Um so I think we'll bring in all the planeswalkers. All the planeswalkers in, and then I guess we just like trim a smidge i don't think our opponent has any equipment yeah maybe something like that is there anything else that's specifically good against control i guess maybe lithomantic barrage but oh that was that was impressive the hero's resolve with four mirrodins actually actually kind of powerful six lands aster seems bad this is sort of better i guess poison control eh, play the land past the turn 
opponent, Murex and Shrelves Hive. That's a that's an annoying one. Well, run out the whole bird. Yeah, turn two Shrelves Hive on the play is is pretty good. Well, let's play another one. Well, I think we have to attack here. Actually, I think we don't attack here. We would prefer not to get poisoned if we can help it. Opponent shipwreck marsh and passes. Well, play the land and I think we pass and flash in the wandering emperor. Yeah, let's. I guess we do it now. Wandering emperor. Take it down. Make a two-two. Opponent's got a lot of one ones, but thankfully we have a lot of two twos. Well, kind of a lot of two twos. The scrub side is obnoxious. All right, gonna kill the wandering emperor. Well, let's Elspeth. Take it up. Play Sokinzan. Pass the turn. How many of our Planeswalkers can you kill, opponent? That's the question. That is the question. Ooh, Memory Deluge, okay. Not killing any Planeswalkers this turn by the looks. Passes. Well, take up Elspeth. Actually, let's Aster's first. Let's play Aster. Go digging. I guess Battle Fist. Take up Elspeth. Play the land. Play the Battle Fist. Yeah, I guess we start chipping in for a bit of damage. Hit you for two. I mean, eventually our opponent's gonna wrath, but at least it wraths away all their tokens. Nahiri's resolve would actually be interesting. Well, apparently the wrath is coming. I don't think our opponent would be making this attack if they weren't planning on wrathing. Uh, so block everything. Where's the wrath? Where's the wrath opponent? Where's the wrath? Wow, not a wrath memory deluge. And a tap land. Play Nahiri. Equip to Aster. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we can't win, right? We could hit for 10, 11. Well, go to combat. Attack. Trigger, trigger. Opponent. Takes the beats. Now play the crowbar for free. And I mean, I guess we might as well rebel salvo because we're going to lose it. And then tick up, we're actually, <laughs> we're actually to the point where we can ultimate Elspeth, although it doesn't do a ton yet. Did you find the wrath? Path of Pirel. Oh God, there it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Tick up. That's right, we have haste. Hit ya. Oh no, could we have equipped? Am I an idiot? Maybe. Probably an idiot. Blink it all. Oh my God, we're going to beat this control deck. Every time we play Nahiri's Resolve, I become more and more impressed with it. I become more and more impressed with it. Even if they kill the Resolve, our stuff still comes back. White Sun's Twilight to gain some life, but our stuff returns. Nahiri, haste, can't block, Winota in standard. And I, I mean, let's, let's send a message. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta take that free value while we can, and that was very impressive. Oh my goodness. Maybe there's a Nahiri deck. Maybe there's a Nahiri deck. <laughs> sweet, 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 sweet. Memer Dream, match number, what, four? Are we on match four? I think we're on match four. So far, Nahiri's. Oh. I mean, we're gonna keep this. Only, I would hopefully draw another equipment or two, but so far, Nahiri's felt pretty solid, I would say. Not as bad as I imagined. I'll give it that. Ooh, all right, opponent's going a grow. But can you beat a pile of equipment, opponent? That's the real question. Ouch. Ooh, all right, we will match your saga with a <laughs> from here in equipment. All right, equipment this turn would be really good. And here is resolve. All right, well. I mean, I guess eventually we're gonna get to Nahiri. Aster should find us an equipment, right? About it, Schwamp. Liliana. And are we taken down? We're taken down, all right, that's fine. We will reset that eventually anyway. Um, Let's play the land, play Aster. Well, Citizen Crowbar is probably better, right? <clears throat> that seems, seems better here. Opponent's gonna tick up. Pigeon Nahiri. I think we're actually 
Looking for this Nahiri's resolve more than anything. Attack the Liliana, see what our opponent does. Going to block. Well, Sundown Pass, Nahiri's Resolve. Let's see if they can kill it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I like it. Well, this Nahiri's Resolve is going to ruin our opponent's day. We'll discard a land. Opponent discards Breach the Multiverse, plays a land. But here they come with haste and for Mirrodin, get another token. You got removal now? All right. Opponent does have removal. We go digging. Hullbird. Let's take a Hullbird. Play a Hullbird. Citizen's Crowbar. Kill Lily. Hit our, oh, this is so cool. This is such a cool synergy. All right, you know what? Plant the Mythic Rank player. <laughs> Normally I'm complaining about your deck building prowess, but in this case, Blinking the equipment and keeping the tokens is sweet. Boy, Nahiri's Resolve might be my new favorite card in standard. It might be my new favorite card in standard. We're gonna kill our opponent before they can even get to breach mana. I mean, our stuff comes back and our opponent just dies, I think. Wow, we have all tokens. All right, everything returns. Trigger, trigger, trigger. Well, uh, let's Nahiri. And get a few Nahiri triggers. War with, oh my goodness, Rebel Salvo. Let's cast, the, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Whoa! Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, maybe this deck is just sweet. Oh, we hit two equipment for free. Nahiri's Resolve is so sweet. My God. All right, what do we want against Mono? Mono Black Breach the Multiverse. I mean, some Planeswalkers could be okay. Maybe we're just mostly set up for this matchup. Nahiri's Resolve is, is this a sleeper card? I mean, this is the second deck we've played with Nahiri's Resolve in very different decks. Like the first one was the like Panharmonicon deck. This is a full on like equipment for Mirrodin deck, which is a very janky theme. Nahiri's Resolve just seems busted. I love, I absolutely love, we talked about last time we played Nahiri's Resolve, one of the big issues with Nahiri's Resolve is if you want to blink your whole team, that's sometimes awkward because it means you don't have any blockers. So you blink everything and your opponent just hits you for a ton of damage. One of the really neat things about blinking these four Mirrodin equipment is we're not actually blinking the creatures. Like we get to keep all the two twos and the one one. So we actually have defense, but we also get the value out of blinking because they're coming back into play and making more two twos and more one ones. Platy might've done it this time. Platy might've actually, actually done it this time. Let's go like, a Wandering Emperor, a Wandering Emperor, go down one Sunfall. And uh, that was like really good Nahiri too. Unfortunately, our opponent was just dead. The other thing is like, just giving your team haste is really good. Just like being able to haste in the team is a, a really big upside and it works well with Nahiri. Like it lets Nahiri come down and we can put an equipment on it and get those triggers right away, which is sweet. Maybe the deck's good. Maybe the deck's good. I can't believe I'm saying those words about Nahiri for Mirrodin equipment. It sounds like the ultimate meme, but yeah, we'll try this. We're gonna need at least one more land, but uh, we can bash some heads with this crowbar. Blade Old War Whip is sweet. Unfortunately, it, that quip is so expensive. Oh, play the land past the turn. Opponent, Schwamp, and Life of Tishiro Yumazawa. So opponent's kind of like mono black sagas? I mean, we can sack the crowbar to blow him up. I don't know if we want to sack the crowbar because the more equipment, the better for Nahiri. I think what we really would like to set up is a big Nahiri turn. Opponent, Graveyard Trespasser. Certainly. I'll play the tap land, gain some life. Crowbar part two. Nahiri down to, down to four mana. Still wouldn't mind drawing another land. If we double block and they have removal, it's kind of a blowout. You know, we'll take it this turn. We'll go to 18. It's better next turn. We can probably leave up a mana next turn. And if they do try to blow us out, then at least we can, at least we can blow up the saga. Or should we just play the war whip? Yeah, let's, let's play the hall of bread. A little bit less mana, but I do, I do like leaving up a crowbar activation here just in case. Okay. I mean, we got to do some blocking, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, I think we have to. Block, block, block. So our opponent needs two removal spells now for the full blowout. Cut down. 
Oh, do they really have two removal spells? Go for the throat. Yeah, this this is rough. I think we gotta kill it though. All right, so we lose literally our whole board and an equipment. We don't draw land, so we gotta play the War Whip. All right, chill with the removal. Gix, opponent attacks. Well, I mean, we're gonna kill one of them. Not looking great, we could use a removal spell and or a land, we need something. Opponent gonna eat the crowbar. Well, we block, so we get to kill a Graveyard Trespasser. We lose our dork, opponent draws a card. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. Please a land or a removal spell. Okay, we hit a land. Like, we can play the Nahiri. Everything we do is soft to removal. If we pass, this is gonna flip. I'm scared to play a creature. Yeah, I think we gotta pass. This feels bad. I think we gotta pass and try to Wandering Emperor the Gix. Duress. Well, okay, we're gonna play the Wandering Emperor. Our opponent takes our War Whip. Well, now they know the Wandering Emperor's coming, which does make it worse. Ugh. All right, make it 2-2. Two -two. Wow. Yeah, this is the blowout of blowouts. This is every single thing going as wrong as it can possibly go. Yeah, I mean, I guess we got a chump. I do not feel good about where we're at. They get to draw again with Gix. Opponent passes. I'll play the land. Play, play Aster. Go digging. Grab a war whip. Equip a war whip. All right, no, no more removal. No more removal. Come on, come on, please. They didn't make a land drop even though. Our opponent has just drawn four lands in every removal spell. Another duress takes the war whip. Corrupt core official gets our Nahiri and a land. Well, okay. Oh, Rebel Salvo is actually not bad. So that lets us kill the Gix. We need Nahiri's Resolve. Oh, we wanted that Nahiri so much. So opponent's like almost a discard deck. Passes. Well, I mean, equip. Equip. Do we even attack? I mean, we've kind of built a pure steel in that we get to equip for free. Oh, Liliana's so bad. So if we attack, we hit for 10? Yeah, I don't think we can win the race. Yeah, we gotta pass. At least we have the Plaza of Heroes. Doesn't get around Edicts. Life of Toshiro Yumazawa. Okay. All right, we really need to draw something. Okay, wins card, Craig. That's... I mean, I guess technically a common dual land is something. That's not the something we meant. I guess we need to be a little more specific. We need a body on the battlefield because all this protection doesn't matter through an edict. Opponent duresses. Well, that's a whiff at least. Come on, Nahiri's Resolve. Nahiri's Resolve probably wins us the game. Nahiri would be good. Just any non... Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, we are running poorly. Opponent flips their saga. Yeah, that's a lot of lands in a row. And there's the top deck, and that does it. Yep, 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 yep. Well, our opponent definitely outran us that game, that's for sure. Well, run it back. Yeah, that was just like a lot of lands in a row off the top of our deck at the worst possible time. We got to the we got to the stabilization point where our opponent had nothing, we had nothing, but our opponent drew all non-lands and we drew and we drew all lands. Well, let's go to game three. I mean, we're gonna keep this. I don't expect it to work because we see the amount of discard our opponent's playing. Yeah, there's a duress. So opponent's almost like a straight up discard deck. All right, I, oh, come on deck, not like this. Oh, not like this arena, not like this. There's, a, wow, okay. There's an additional risk on arena of keeping hands with a lot of lands. Because it seems like for some reason, if you keep a lot of lands, you're more likely to keep drawing lands. Opponent, Graveyard Trespasser. Yup. Well, I mean, Rabbit Battery is technically not a land. Well, go attacking. Could use a payoff. How about some of our payoffs, deck? A Nahiri, an Aster, Nahiri's Resolve is like, that's always the dream, although our opponents did. Yeah, opponent has a Gix, of course. Well, Blade Hole War Whip. It was like kind of something. Play the land. Pass the turn. Opponent. Virus Beetle to get rid of the last land. 
And Mirix in passes. Uh, we draw even more lands. Passes. Well, okay, that's technically not a land, so we will accept it. It's also not a payoff. We need some of the cards that are at the top end of our curve. Like, with this Gix out, we are not going to get there drawing Grizzly Bear equipment. We need Aster, we need Ahiri, we need a Planeswalker, we need, we need uh, Nahiri's Resolve. Those are the cards we need. Those are the cards we need, and we need them soon, like this turn soon. We do kind of like that. Do we even bother to attack? Probably not, right? We just Sunfall? Yeah, I think we Sunfall to make the biggest token possible. And then play the land and pass the turn. All right, well, who top decks something by me first? Opponent. And Cruelty of Gix, that's pretty bomby. So opponent's gonna tutor next turn. So they're gonna get Breach the Multiverse. Blade Hold War Whip. Well, play the War Whip. The question is, do we turn this on? Yeah, I think we do. Turn it on. Equip. Hit you for eight. Although I assume this means our opponent can tutor up an answer. We'll see. So opponent's going to six. You're gonna blow up the plaza. Yup. I mean, I guess they can tutor up Breach the Multiverse and just see what happens. That probably makes the most sense, right? You Breach the Multiverse, hope to run well, and then you hope to mill something else to Cruelty of Gix the next turn. I mean, that's gotta be their plan. No other plan, no other plan really makes sense. Tutors down to six. All right, Invasion of Fiora. Okay, I mean, that is another plan. And a land. All right, so we draw nothing. Our opponent gets our rabbit battery, I guess. That's actually kind of good, because then they can haste something in and flip this. How about a payoff? Windscarred Craig. That's not good. Oh no, we are fizzling. Fizzling at the worst possible time. Opponent, Mirax, untaps. Virus Beetle makes us discard a land. And now they're gonna flip this invasion and then, well, they could have flipped the invasion. All right, we get one more turn. I mean, we gotta draw something this turn. We are right, we cannot just keep drawing lands. All right, Nahiri's Resolve is something. Whether or not it's gonna be enough of something remains to be seen. Because they are gonna get to flip this. Blink them all. Well, we'll see. So they get to flip this. They get Marchesa, which is pretty good. These can't block. Our stuff has haste. Opponent goes attacking, goes attacking. Yup, flips it. Marchesa. Sure. Tenacious underdog. Our stuff returns. For Mirrodin. Play the Citizen's Crowbar. Okay, sack a Rebel. We get the Crowbar. So move this on a Double Striker. Move this on a Double Striker. So opponent has four blockers. Yeah, I think we just attack with this one. Let's attack with both double strikers. I think that Nahiri, uh, they could draw Breach. Breach would be scary. Otherwise, Nahiri's resell for Mirrodin is actually gonna, is actually gonna clean this up, I think. Opponent blocks. This one also has Trample. Wow, they're gonna cash in the Marchesa. Okay. Well, this is the moment of truth. Opponent goes to four, end of turn. We're gonna blink a few equipment. I mean, opponent needs a huge top deck here. Wow, maybe this deck wants four Nahiri's Resolve. I feel like every time we resolve a Nahiri's Resolve, we just win. Nahiri's Resolve, two OP. Opponent. <laughs> Corrupts themselves, but it doesn't actually do anything. <laughs> they hit themselves for a bunch and then <laughs> Gained it all back. <laughs> oh, okay. Maybe this deck's just actually sweet. I am impressed with how well the deck is run for sure. Like shocked. More memer dream time. Uh, it's it's actually like a day or two later. <laughs> We are now at Mythic. I don't just randomly change my clothes every like hour. Like uh, if I have a different shirt, it's probably cause it's like the next day. But anyway, we're at Mythic now. Is that, 
<laughs> is Nahiri. Somehow, meme we're dreaming a mythic card. I am tempted to keep this. Just because we've seen Nahiri's resolve be so good in this deck. This hand has so many lands. It is a greedy, greedy keep. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Okay, well, uh, we are on the draw. We do need to draw two lands. Well, there's one. All right, all right, all right. Opponent, Grixis. All right, some tenacious underdogging. Well, we drew the two lands, so that's good news. Uh, let's start for Mirrodining, Mirrodying. Hopefully not dying. Well, now we really want to hear yourself because we have all the Vermeer and stuff to play. The thing is we want these triggers if we get Nahiri, but we also don't want to, you know what? I think we block this one. Let's kill it. I think that's fine. Opponent, Shipwreck Marsh. Kaido Suzuki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Phases it out. Uh, let's Sundown Pass. Play a Battle Fist. And then stop on our opponent's upkeep and Rebel Salvo the Kaido. Rebel Salvo is like absurd in this deck because it's almost always one mana. All right, Kaido Suzuki down. All right, well, that's not bad. We got through Kaido with it drawing a single card, which if Kaido's three mana draw a card, we're, I mean, we also had to spend a removal spell, but still that is about as, as lacking as in impact as a Kaido can get. Uh, well, go to combat attack, yeah. I think we try to wait on Nahiri to get another equipment or two down. Fairy Mastermind, uh-huh. Wow, opponent's gonna block, okay. Play the War Whip? And then, I mean, I guess we, I guess we equip, it's free. Might as well. I mean, so we have a 3-1 double striker. That's not bad. Uh, opponent. All right, cuts it down. Lots of removal. Rabbit battery. Well, play the war whip. Play the rabbit battery. Actually, let's do a post-combat. I think it's less likely to get countered post-combat. Let's equip. Dude, chill with the killing of our stuff. All right, well. Rabbit battery. I mean, we have Nahiri down to one mana and we've gone through a bunch of removal. That's good. Opponent, Underground River. Passes. The question, like, do we just run out Nahiri here? Do we wait? Let's play the land. Make a Murex token. Equip. Trample up that one one. Trample first strike. How are you gonna beat it? Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna attack this turn though because they have flash stuff. We already saw we already saw the fairy mastermind. We actually really want this rabbit battery to put on Nahiri. We're basically hoping our opponent at some point taps down. We're hoping at some point our opponent taps down, and that lets us just like one shot our opponent. I guess it won't be a one shot, but to get a huge, a huge boost of card advantage with Nahiri. Well, let's go to combat. Attack with the with the might. Opponent. Urtai. All right, kills the rabbit battery. We draw a card, and then they can block the might. Sure. Well, play battle fist. Play Citizen's Crowbar. Equip. Pass the turn. Chandra. Okay. What is Chandra going to do? <sighs> Kills both of our dorks. Well, all right, let's play Asters Go Digging. Get a War Whip. Equip. I mean, we get to equip everything for free. We don't have haste though, unfortunately. I mean, this is a, this is a mighty Asters, that's for sure. Does it actually beat a Chandra though? Like Chandra gets to tick down here or tick up and find a spell, which will probably kill Asters. The problem with Nahiri is like, if we don't have things to attack with, it doesn't really do anything. We really need it. Losing that rabbit battery really, really hurt. What we really need is Nahiri's, we need Nahiri's Resolve. That is the card that just like goes off here. Opponent draws something with Corpse Appraiser. Chandra looking for a spell. Actually whiffs, which is kind of nice. Did you draw removal? Okay, Corpse Appraiser. Okay, so at least we get to get Nahiri down. 
we get to get Nahiri down. We get to draw a card and I think kill Chandra, right? Hopefully. Citizen's Crowbar. Play Nahiri. Equip to Aster. Wait, is there a way we can win? So if we put this on Aster, we would attack our opponent for 16, but they can block. Yeah, I think we have to, I think we have to just kill Chandra. Oh, our free card's a land. That's not exactly what we were looking for. But we do get to deal with the Chandra. That's good. Like, 7-3, double strike trample. Like, there's no, there's no blocking through this opponent. Opponent just loses everything, right? So opponent does kill the Aster. But they lose their entire board. We get to play the land. We get to play another war whip. Equip. Let's equip to this to play around cut down. That makes more sense. How much is this to equip? Yeah, with no Aster. So maybe that's it. I guess we can equip this. All right. All right, opponent. Let's see what you got. Please don't kill our Nahiri. We want to draw cards. Nahiri's resolve is so absurd if we find it. Opponent finds a go for the throat. Finds a shield or edict. Well, play a Citizen's Crowbar. Equip. Play a Citizen's Crowbar. And... Equip. And equip. Pass the turn. We have so many equipment. Oh, I wish we didn't lose that rabbit battery. Wow, opponent desperation cycle. Passes. And scoops it up, oh my goodness! At some point, we're just gonna have to say this deck's good, right? Like, there's gotta be a point where we're just like, okay, this deck is just, it, it actually is the dream. Doesn't happen often on Meme or Dream. And I guess we talked about during the intro, like, compared to some Meme or Dream decks, this one is definitely less janky, but still. This has been an incredibly impressive performance for this deck. Like, sideboard-wise, I guess we just Wandering Emperor. Actually, Sunfall's probably not even bad, is it? Maybe we go two Sunfalls. We do like the Exile removal in this matchup. We saw Tenacious Underdog. We gotta be able to deal with Shieldred. That one was funny because we kinda just like, we mulliganed and we just played Grizzly Bear equipment. I mean, I guess we had an Aster for like a turn, but it died before I, the Aster turn was big. The Aster turn to take down the Chandra. If we didn't have that and that Chandra stuck, we'd probably lose. So I guess Aster even for a turn was big. We got in one Nahiri attack and it hit a land, but mostly that was just, an overwhelming number of Fermirian equipment was enough, was enough. Oh, and we didn't even find Nahiri's resolve. Nahiri's resolve there would have been ridiculous. I think we keep this and kind of play the control game. What? On Meeber Dream, remember the whole, pop to 795. Um, in Meeber Dream, remember, the whole idea is these decks theoretically won six or more matches in a row, a platinum rank or better in best of three. One of the explanations of how janky decks do that is opponents getting unlucky and scooping early. So, Eh, we're not gonna complain. We we won fairly in game one. Game two, opponent apparently Mulligan didn't like their hand, but uh, I think this means the deck's a dream. Like, I, I, I don't know what else to say. Like, I, I am shocked. I am stunned. I've tried to build the Hiri decks in the past and they never work, but somehow, Platy, Platinum Mythic Ring player, apparently broke the format. Sweet. So what did we learn this week about Nahiri equipment? And for the first time in a while, I think we actually have a dream on our hand. Normally we do meme and dream and it's like memeing on how horrible the decks are. We never win games, but we pretty convincingly went four and one with the deck. And not only that, but it mostly didn't feel like we were like super high rolling or anything. The deck just actually felt good, even though it looks ridiculous on paper with all these four mirrored in equipment, but the deck actually felt really, really powerful. Like the payoffs were good. Aster was solid the free equipping is kind of hilarious they're not quite free equipping although often if we have blade hold war whip it is just free equipping which is building our own pure steel paladin almost in standard like that's a really neat synergy nahiri 
we didn't get to see it go off a ton, but when it did go off, it was good. And worst case, our deck has so many equipment, it was often like two or three mana and a two mana five four is like kind of a legit card in standard. And then the Heary's Resolve once again proved its awesomeness in standard. And that's maybe the most exciting part. Like we played it in the Elish Jorn Blink deck and it was really, really sweet. This is a very, very different strategy, like super different than our Boros Blink deck. And the Hero's Resolve once again was like the best card in the deck. And it's so sneaky good, even better than I noticed, honestly, with the Formiridin equipment. I was thinking, okay, like we play these equipment, the creatures die, Nahiri's Resolve gives us a way to reset them. But it's actually way better than that because the stuff doesn't need to die. We play all of our four mirrored and stuff and make a bunch of two twos. And then every turn we can blink them all and make a bunch more two twos. So in the mid game, in the late game, the Hero's Resolve is often just like add three two twos, four two twos, five two twos to the battlefield each turn. And then they're coming down with haste. And then our opponent's just dying on the spot. So the Hero's Resolve was absolutely ridiculous. So I gotta say, I think Platinum Mythic Rank Player actually did it this time, which I guess on one hand, maybe isn't a surprise. Compared to some of our Memer Dream decks, this one actually looks kind of good. Like we have a full sideboard, we have four ofs, we have a reasonable mana base. Like overall, the deck seems solid enough. And we talked about that way back during the intro that compared to like some of the just ultra janky decks, this one actually looked like a, a reasonable deck, but like I also said in the intro, I've tried Nahiri decks and I had zero success with Nahiri. Like I just couldn't get Nahiri to work. I didn't have Nahiri's resolve though. Maybe that's the key card. I wasn't as focused on Asters. I had a bunch of like, you know, Kembas and other payoffs, but this plan actually seemed surprisingly good. Way, way better than I expected. So I guess shout out to Plant the Mythic Ring player. Uh, it kind of broke it this time and we might actually have a playable equipment deck in standard. Not only did it do well on the ladder, we finished off at mythic like relatively high mythic and the deck was still able to keep up so if you like the idea of being able to play equipment in standard somehow i'd actually recommend this deck i think this might be the first time we've ever had a meme or dream deck that actually like you should play it you should actually build it and play it if you enjoy playing equipment also worth mentioning the deck is like almost budget friendly on arena if you look at the deck this whole chunk all of our cheap stuff is common is uncommon uh for mirrored and equipment so as far as rares or mythics it's nahiri aster sunfall nahiri's resolve so assuming you have the mana base for standard and you don't have to spend eight rares on battlefield forges and sundown passes the main deck is actually pretty cheap we have what uh 10 13 13 rares altogether. That's actually pretty reasonable. Like that's almost a budget deck. So uh, yeah, assuming you have the mana base, this actually seems like a, a pretty sweet option. I guess you might have to downgrade the sideboard a bit, but still a good deck, a pretty cheap deck. And uh, yeah, if you want to play some equipment in standard, I would definitely recommend it because the deck actually felt legitimately good. So I guess this one is officially a dream. So Anyway, everyone, that's the Heary Equipment. That's been our meme or dream for this week. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you soon.